Comicopia, my weekly review of comic books. This week we're checking out collectibles in comic books. So first for a future collectible, here is... Tomo el Encanto, Mr. Romato. It's Tomo number zero, folks. This issue dives further into the past of this character who made her debut in She. We see Tomo train in a martial arts dojo and get in gear for an all-out battle for blood. I like this artist, Amanda Connor, and I look forward to more of her work. The books following this cast of characters created by Bill Tucci have proved to be very collectible and rare. So get this and hang on, because everyone needs something to pay the rent with. This week I was introduced to a great book called Hellboy, The Corpse, and The Iron Shoes. This follows the adventures of the foul-mouthed, quick-witted beast they call Hellboy. This time, he must find a place to bury one of the undead. It's a lot harder than it sounds. Trust me, I know. Great book. 4.5 out of 5 Gs on the anti-gravity scale. Now that you've seen something that's collectible that you can get today, try checking out something that's been collectible for 30 years. Green Hornet number 1 is one of the many highly collectible gold key books of the late 60s. Right now it holds a value of $35, but with the new Green Hornet movie coming out, it's bound to skyrocket. This issue features a photo cover of, get this, Bruce Lee. Now this little bit in comic history is a rare find, and I give it three Gs on the anti-gravity scale. Next up, no, it's the Simpsons comics, number 16. In this issue, the gruesome twosome, Patty and Selma, lose their jobs at the DMV and their home. When forced to move in with the Simpsons, they wreak havoc on Bart, Lisa, Maggie, Homer, and Marge. This installment in the series includes a kooky bongo grab bag comic that takes a look at the day in the life of Bumble Me Man, plus a contest, Redesign Radioactive Man's Head. I got mine. Now the Simpsons are my fave, but I think they lose something in comic form. Needless to say, it still gets 3.5 Gs on the anti-gravity scale. Well, I guess that's about it for Comicopia this week. See you next time. All right, this week's game review is Destruction Derby. For which format? Sony PlayStation. Now listen to this, it's made by Psygnosis, this game. And when you saw on the sampler disc, it looked great. You were smashing cars, the car gets dented. And when I first popped in the real game, we realized, me and my friends, it was kind of hard to play, hard to control, and it really puts you off the game right at first. But I did have a day where I got to play it and play it and play it. And the more I got used to it, the more I got used to manipulating the controls, the more I loved this game. There are four modes of play. There's time trials, which is basically time trials. There's wrecking racing, where you're racing and as well getting extra points for hitting other cars. There's also destruction derby, which is a lot of fun. It's a huge oval and basically it's gladiators but you're in a car and you get a certain amount of points for smashing the other cars from the guy do 360 you get 10 points if you hit his fender you get a certain amount of points all you have to do with this game i'm telling you sit down learn the controls and really with any game sit down learn the controls and learn to manipulate whatever it is you're driving or using because once you get that once you get the hang of that the game starts to really show itself and it's like true form I'm telling you, I give it a 4 out of 5 on the anti-gravity scale because it's a great game, but stick with it, sit with it, and learn the controls. Oh. What comics would you like on a desert island? I would take the complete collected Will Eisner, the complete collected Miss Fury, and the complete collected Brenda Starr. In this materialistic culture, inevitably I found myself to be a collector, but almost by accident. I end up collecting objects because they're of interest to me. Uh, I find inspiration for some of my work or by juxtaposing these objects I've collected, uh, they generate ideas for me. And I never really know uh, 
what's going to catch my eye. Uh, it's not really a question of rarity. Uh, it's more the desirability of the image or the uh, idea that an object might represent. So this stuff just piles up, but you never can tell when something might be an inspiration. A uh, porcelain uh, Japanese couple seated uh, has an entirely different meaning when you begin to replace their heads. It's a wonderful world of recycling here. Next up, we take a look at collectors and we get a peek at Ted Shackelford's Sailor Moon dolls. Woo -hoo -hoo! Attention, attention. The Sci-Fi Channel wants you to ally yourself with the future. Fan Alliance members in selected areas will receive passes to special VIP screenings of Dimension Films, Hellraiser Bloodline. His evil has existed through the ages. Oh, my God. Do I look like someone who cares what God thinks? Now, a brilliant scientist will hunt him across the past, present, and future to stop him forever. Welcome to oblivion. <laughs> Hellraiser Bloodline opens at theaters everywhere March 8th. But Alliance members in selected areas have the opportunity to see it first. The Sci-Fi Channel Fan Alliance. Don't leave your planet without it. I'm Roger Corman, and you're watching the Sci-Fi Channel. Would you go fishing with a lawnmower? Many really great collections are discovered by accident. We found one old warehouse in Winnipeg that turned out to have a huge lost treasure trove. And it wasn't even guarded by Aztecs with dart guns or anything. Standing on the sixth floor of a building, it's approximately 6,000 square feet and it's stacked from head to toe with everything from pocketbooks, comics, magazines, toys, records, the whole shebang in the collector's world. one of the always and we have a million plus comics worth a million plus dollars. I would say we probably have the most of Marvel comics. Uh, we have anywhere from the 1960s on up through the 90s. DC would be second. We have as well a collection of those from the 40s on up through the 60s and 70s and 80s. Uh, other company, companies that we have include Dennis the Menace, uh, Walt Disney, Uncle Scrooge, Donald Duck. Charlton Comics, we printed Hanna-Barbera mostly, uh, and old Dell Comics, Roy Rogers, Lone Ranger, lots of TV stuff like Mission Impossible. People send us lists through the mail of things that they want. This, for instance, is uh, a guy from New Jersey, and he's looking for Dennis the Menace Comics. The earliest number here I have is number 14. It's from the 50s. I'm sure he'll be happy to get that. When I first started up here, in, in this particular warehouse, was about five years ago, and I remember everything was unorganized, nothing was really sorted, couldn't find anything. I remember standing in the middle of the warehouse, scratching my head and thinking, where do I start on this mess? Ultimately, comic books should be stored in a, where you store all your secrets, in a dark, cool place. The Bruce Peck way of storing comics is vertically inside boxes. However, um, there are other ways to do it, and this is one way that uh, is really interesting for me, and that's to store them in these uh, binders. Inside each of these plastic coverings, there's a, a comic that's also enclosed in plastic. And these are stored upright and inside a binder, which is a cabinet, which is all closed. Well, these are my cabinets. I keep the comics inside plastic, the plastic inside the binders, and the binders inside the cabinet. 
So everything is shut up nice and nice and neat for added protection. My Fort Knox. Because I have so many comics, I need to keep track of them. And what I do is I have a database uh, of comics. And what I can look at is I can look at the title and um, the issue numbers and the location inside this uh, report. And I can find out exactly where, where the comic is. After this, we answer email. And you can find out where to write to us. And you know what? Here's a hint for email users. Make sure you type in all the T's in anti-gravity. Created by Star Trek legend William Shatner. Tech War, a Sci-Fi Channel original series. Tomorrow at 6 p.m., 3 Pacific. I don't know. I mean, if someone could... Have to talk into the camera? Yeah. Hello and welcome to my home. <laughs> All this stuff in this case here, it's mostly stuff like um, hair straighteners and skin lighteners, stuff intended for um, people of color, but beautiful packaging. I collect anything that visually I find is, is sort of strong. Jeez, good lord. <laughs> but here is my collection of old 78s. Let's see what we have at random. I'll just pull one out and say, hopefully it's impressive. Uh, Mountain City Blues, Clarence Williams Orchestra. And decent, but nothing to write home about. I always thought Crumb's brother Charles was a better artist than him. You know, he drew this when he was a kid, and he drew that Harpo Marx cover there. He had a really strong style. Uh, Robert owed me some artwork because I'd given him some records in the early 80s. And I actually wanted a Kandinsky, but since that was never going to happen, I asked him to do his imitation of a, of a Kandinsky. It's no Picasso, but I can't, you know, can't really complain about the price either, so... Here's some of our enormous whack load of email. Now, we'd love to respond to it all, but we get tons of the stuff. We do read it all, though, and we pick a couple per week to read on the air. Now, I have one here from Philip Leverett and Joseph Masongsong, who write, I've noticed that the New Men and the X-Men are very similar. Bird is like Archangel, Bishop is like Pilot, New Force and New Man are like X-Force and X-Men. Yeah, okay, I have to disagree, because Proctor is really, really hairy, and Professor X is really bald. What more difference do you need? And this one's from Bill Martin, who writes, why do you guys only read the insulting, strange, or really silly letters? It puzzles me so. I couldn't come up with a reasonable explanation for it on my own, so please tell me why. And P.S. More Batman. Well, Bill, it's all right if I call you Bill, isn't it? The answer is that those letters provide more fun for the writers. We enjoy coming up with the cheesy replies that I have to deliver. And if we answered all the mail that just said, I love your show, we'd have to do a two-hour variety special. And as for Batman, we'll see. Hmm, that looks good. Cut, print. And for this week's poll, here's your topic. Rock and roll in comics. What band ought to be heroes in a comic book, and what comic book characters should form a band? You can call or you can email us at antigravity at ytv.ca or write to us at the Anti-Gravity Room, care of YTV Canada, 64 Jefferson Avenue, Unit 18, Toronto, Canada, M6K, 3H3. And our webpage is at www.antigrav.com. So join us next time when we look at comics that aren't necessarily superheroes. From dinosaurs to too much coffee man, these comics cover it all. So it seems like these collectors all know what they want, and they collect it. But what if you don't know? Well, you can look at market trends, or you can consult a computer. They say you can make a lot of money collecting old Tupperware. I don't think so. You better collect what you like. And we'll see you next time on... The Anti-Gravity!